Committed to Miramar is a weekly radio talk show hosted by Commissioner Darlene Riggs and longtime Miramarian Sherry Abden. The purpose of Committed to Miramar is to keep you in tune with what's happening in the beautiful city of Miramar, covering topics from healthcare, entertainment, employment, to education, politics, and much more. Turn in every Wednesday at 5 p.m. to Radio Uni Latina USA. Use hashtag Committed to Miramar. Hello, Miramarians. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, Commissioner of the beautiful city of Miramar, and welcome to Committed to Miramar. Hello, Miramar. I am your co-host, Sherry Abden, longtime resident of Miramar. A couple of weeks ago, we educated you on your health and resources available to you right here in Miramar. Last week, we had our very own Chief of Police, Chief Dexter Williams, speaking to you about your safety in the beautiful city of Miramar. And today, we are going to cover financial health. Absolutely. Financial health is such an important piece to having a good quality of life, which everyone knows that's what I'm about. My job as commissioner is to help you improve your quality of life. You could have all of your physical needs met, be free from any kind of illness, and be safe in your home, in your community, like we talked last week, but not have what any of us would define as a good quality of life if you are struggling financially. So today we are going to have a lot of fun and education educate you on how to be financially healthy. Having that financial freedom and being financially healthy allows you that peace of mind and knowing you have some stability in case of an emergency. We have to prepare ourselves for that. So we have some very, very special guests with us today who are experts in this arena. It's not me. <laughs> that much we've established. Healthcare is my thing. Credit, not, not so much. So Miramarians, please help me in welcoming to Committed to Miramar, President and CEO of Build Worth Strategies, BWS, <laughs> Justo Villalobos. Yeah. Right. yeah. But gentlemen, welcome to Committed to Miramar. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Build Worth Strategies. I'm excited. And I told you a little bit of my story. And we're going to use me as an example today because I've been through some madness. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Committed to Miramar. First off, thank you so much for having us. Um, my name is Justo Villalobos. Um, I'm the president and CEO of Build Word Strategies. Um, well, I guess I'll go first with regards to a little bit of our background, my background yeah. too, and then I guess Berto will go ahead and just share. Um, you know, obviously, this is something that I've been really passionate about. Um, you know, obviously, knowing that credit pretty much, in a sense, um, com it's, it's something that, for the most part, everybody's going to need. Um, for me personally, I've gone through my own endeavors and, you know, you know, being in the realm of credit now, being a business owner for the last five years, um, I have been the owner of Builder Strategies for the last three. I did have, and going backwards from today's date, um, I was actually a partner um, on another company called Redemption Credit Education. And this actually has morphed into what we're at today. Um, right now, we do have um, ser several locations in um, in Miami, Miami Gardens and um, also servicing the area of, of, of Miramar. And we have three offices. We have a, a staff. We have a team. And, um, you know, we help a little bit over a thousand clients right now active in the program. Uh, prior to actually having the credit repair company, actually, I worked in banking. So I've had financial experience um, coming from banking. I was a business banker for yep. Bank of America for six years. Excellent. So I did that for a little bit. Um, I did help um, clients with regards to business clients with business lines of credits, uh, business credit, credit cards, um, financials, things of that nature. Um, so I've had some experience on that. And You know, as you talk, I'm thinking about your poor wife. You don't get to speak anything to <laughs> you. Poor thing. I'm going to give her my headset. Okay? <laughs> you got to hide it. So, yeah, absolutely, and, and then this is where actually uh, me and me and Alberto, um, we actually used to work together for a yeah. company called uh, Loyalty Mortgage yep. uh, many but, years before that, and um, we worked there for almost six years. About and, um, yeah, we so we were partners and we did mortgages, so we were mortgage brokers. Yeah, You're like the full circle because usually folks get into oh my goodness my credit when they're buying a car yeah. or a house. Right. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. So I told you you were the experts. <laughs> I'm just a victim over here. <laughs> Oh, and, 
Um, <laughs> well, but it's, it's like who's to say, just to give a little bit about myself. Uh, again, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, to give a little bit about myself, like he mentioned, um, I come also from the background of mortgages. Yeah. We were partners in a mortgage company uh, for about six, seven years yeah. before the big meltdown. Uh, once the meltdown came down, you went to business banking, I went elsewhere. Um, while doing mortgages already, we were, you know, we had to help certain clients with some uh, credit issues. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, so we actually got introduced to it, right, you know, really early. Even though we went out to do other things, we, we fell back in it. And you, so you had a passion for it. I love yeah. when you're called to do something and you jump into it and you became expert at it. And Absolutely. now you're helping thousands of people. That's awesome. That's what it's about. Right. At the end of the day, you know, we don't have the millions. To set to do a, a fund or something like that. So this is how we feel that we give him back you have by the helping us get the million. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would say too, for the most part, uh, you could never stop learning. Um, I think that's one of the key components, um, you know, of growth. Um, you know, that's one thing for us. I, I no. think we learn something new every single day. So every week, even in credit, week. It's, it's constant research, is constant, uh, you know, videos, audios, books, and um, I think that's also the passion and the mm-hmm. drive that we have Excellent. to try to, to try to find. <laughs> more. Yep. What sets you apart from the uh, competitors? From the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I tell you? Um, part of what sets us apart is number one, the passion that we have. Excellent. I don't think everybody has the same passion, so unless you're passionate for something, you're not going to do it with the same love. Mm-hmm. Uh, what fills me, you know, aside from my pockets, is... Obviously, you know, feeling the transparency and uh, when when I'm able to help somebody. Key words, transparency, yes. Yes. because you know yeah, we want to know we come to someone, number mm-hmm. one, their intentions are good and they're going to tell us the truth. Even yeah. if it's, you know, values, Harsh. the yeah. facts are the facts. Right. Like, what's my credit? Tell mm-hmm. me what it is, because if not, then I go to buy that house or buy that car yeah. and then I find out the truth. Correct. So I, I love that transparency is, is key and that credibility, too. So also, um, I would say the knowledge. Oh. I mean, we have extensive yeah. uh, hours of you know, legwork, of you know, books, experience. seminars, um, just experiences. Me personally, I've been doing it for a little bit over 14 years. Husto has been actually doing it for like 16 or 17, something like that. Something like that. So again, the knowledge itself, uh, knowing how to attack or how to go about certain things mm-hmm. is what sets us apart. To you translate, m- you mentioned seven. seminars. Uh, yeah. Do you ever target uh, college kids? Because Absolutely. I find that they are the <laughs> ones who really need the guidance. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to talk about that because <laughs> the earlier, the better. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing and um, something that we've, we've spoken in the past is trying to create a curriculum around educating uh, students and mm-hmm. and basically that's one thing that yeah. I felt that even when I was in banking we had um, FIU and Miami Dade close to us when I was in Doral mm-hmm. and a lot of the guidance that I used to give a lot of time that I used to spend it was really just sitting down with that young individual that's kind of like lost they're kind of hesitant they're, they're scared to sure. do I apply for this credit card and it's just really guiding them giving them the steps and the tools on how to prevent and how to not make mistakes right and sure. which, which that's exactly what mm-hmm. we're looking to do hopefully one day we will enter the the school system that's something that we've spoken in the past that's something that we're trying to develop and um, we need to create something for that because at the end that's our future Absolutely, and they definitely need to be safeguarded by the companies that are making it seem so easy Absolutely. What's the age limit that you can open a credit card. It's 18, correct? 18. You have 18. Be. My son receives stuff in the mail and he's 14. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's, there has to be something against does it. He, have I'm thinking, like, he doesn't have a job. No. Does so, he have the same name as your husband? Yes, he does. Yeah, I okay. figured that's what it is. He's a junior. <laughs> there you go. He's that's a why. junior. I thought so, too. Because I'm thinking there has to be. But they can't tell that he's... he's. Well, there's actually... Um, and this is where the misconception that a lot of people feel that just with a social, uh, mm-hmm. the bureaus are able to identify you. But right. it doesn't really work like no, that. No, no, no. Especially depending on the platform where you're actually retrieving information, like a credit monitoring or when you're going to a bank... Um, it's very different on how they obtain the information. But for the most part, you're going to need a couple of pieces of information. Mm -hmm. And this is where I kind of like tell people, did you know that one out of five American has a discrepancy so large that could prevent them from actually obtaining a loan or even stop? They're going to be paying high interest rates Mm -hmm. because of the discrepancies that they're actually being reported. So in a sense, I feel like it's my moral obligation to fight for the consumer, be there by the, and basically just educate them 
and, and walk them through the process of having healthy credit because at the end, you don't know what you have unless you're actually monitoring mm-hmm. and you have the information and the knowledge on how to even read what's in front of you. I love how, how you know your stuff because yeah. you knew yeah. the question to ask <laughs> even before I tell you he's a junior. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that just goes to show you I know did. your stuff. I, I love did. that. And I'm <laughs> from experience. That's yes. where that comes from. <laughs> and that speaks volume because I was thinking, wait a minute, you're 14 years old. You don't have a job. Why would they send you, you know, um, and give you the opportunity to open a credit line? How is it going to get paid? And you know, our young folks, they don't think about no. that aspect right. one no. month later, 30 days later, getting that bill. That's, and, and that's one of the reasons that I feel personally that why we need to tap into the school system. Because me personally, just to let everybody know, I'm like $100,000 in debt of student loans. Oh, student loans. Just to let everybody Ooh. know, to throw myself out there. Yeah. So, But why? Because I was never educated on this. I never, mm-hmm. I didn't even know about credit until... I was already in the mix when I got into college. If I would have had somebody mm-hmm. who would have been able to explain it prior to me graduating, I promise you I would have made better decisions. And walk you through yeah. it. Yeah. Same thing with me, but I was yeah. always afraid of owing. So I was always hesitant to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's why I didn't get in trouble. But I, too, no one ever taught me the importance of having yeah. good credit. And when I started to establish credit, I still didn't understand how important it was, and I did some things for family members that I shouldn't have done. Right. So yeah. that's another thing, too. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the importance of having healthy credit, well, establishing credit. So those are some of the things coming up, but I love your your credibility. I wanted to add something and before we go ahead into that next topic, mm-hmm. because something else, too, additional to that, Ms. Riggs, um, if you have, which you can, add uh, somebody under the age of 18 mm-hmm. as an authorized user user onto your credit cards, which are going to include personal information, like your name, your last mm-hmm. name, social mm-hmm. address, and um, stuff like that, then if that has happened, then you are going to get creditors that are going to solicit you because that information is already out there. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you mean in the sense of, for example, when my son is old enough, adding him to my cards no, to help now. me establish no, credit? No, adding him now. Oh, you at 14? Yeah. So that would help him establish credit. Absolutely. Okay, we, but not actually giving him the credit card. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my my oldest one probably wouldn't do no. anything with it, but my second yeah. one, my nine year old, oh, oh yes. yeah, oh he would yeah. max that thing out in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is I, I call it like um, for my young people, it's kind of like the training wheels. You know, it's not for them to have their own credit cards, but in a sense, you're there monitoring. So you adding your son that's younger and just sitting down with them and just going over the budget sheets, going over the transaction history, looking over the uh, interest rates, and seeing exactly what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing it because at the end you don't want to get into a credit card as a, as a means as a backup and you're not going to go ahead and take on a mm-hmm. credit card and at the end it's like you're going to overindulge yourself right. so you're going to overspend more than what you're earning especially if you're in school there's a certain amount of limits that you should have and there's certain tools or I would say um, information that you should provide to the creditor such as don't increase my line unless I request it mm-hmm. because guess what your income should meet the limit on I that have a question card. on that in a minute. Mm-hmm. So we'll be right back and we'll continue this conversation with number one, the importance of healthy credit, and then we'll get into the how to build the credit. There's so much to talk about, and this yeah. is such an important topic. So stay tuned with Committed to Miramar. We'll be right back. Unilatin International College with campus in Miramar, Florida, is a boutique college with an applied, cutting edge holistic education model. Business, tourism, and communication students not only develop their field intellectual skills but are also empowered to become holistic professionals and human beings through yoga, self-empowerment, holistic human development courses, and more. Sign up to become a holistic professional at unilatina.edu or call 954-607-4344. Committed to Miramar, committed to our community, it's right here in Miramar. Welcome back to Committed to Miramar. So we're going to pick up where we left off. So we were talking about the importance of 
healthy credit line. So let's let's start from the beginning, building that credit. So I just learned something. I can add my 14-year-old to my, my credit line, but yep. not give him a credit card Correct. so that I can help him establish credit. Because once he's 18, I, I can imagine that's a bit late if I'm sending yeah. him to college, giving him that $500 limit type of thing. So that's good to know. Not only that, I'm sorry, you know, just to add to that. Remember, mm-hmm. when he turns 18, you're going to want him to have a car. Absolutely. So guess what? You're going to have to co-sign. If oh. he defaults, it's on you. That's true. Student loans, you're going to have to co-sign. Yes. So if he, if he defaults again, it's on you. Okay. So now by setting him up the right way from the get, mm-hmm. then you're making sure that when he reaches the age where he's actually going to need credit, he has, he credit. Can, he has his own credit to build on, you know, to, to go by. Excellent. So he doesn't have to chime up. If mind. I could interject, mm-hmm. I had the opposite problem. I'm a cash payer. Oh. <laughs> no cash. Uh, no, no. And I learned the importance of credit. Yeah. <laughs> I was at one point a cash payer. I was a guy that, you know what? Forget credit. I don't need that. I got to pay everything cash. What for? Exactly. Until I got into family, kids. You know, I wanted the yeah. house. I wanted the car. I wanted I was this. Say, how did you guys do with all of that? <laughs> exactly. I'm, 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 I'm a plastic. <laughs> 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 I, Terrible, yeah. but true. So that's excellent. Any other way to build credit? So this is good to know early on. So let's talk about building the credit a little bit more, and then we'll get into the how to not tarnish the right. good credit. Right. So any other ideas you can or advice on how to build credit for the first time? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would say for the most part, uh, the number one key factor in building credit is knowing how credit works. Right. Because mm-hmm. you can't really build something off nothing. So um, let's go over a few key points here. There's actually, um, there's a formula so people understand. Credit is a formula. It's an algorithm. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay, so. Are we talking about the FICA? <coughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Basically. Mm-hmm. Is it so, FICA? Of FICO. FICO. Okay, FICO. you see? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Fair Corporation. So the CO it stands for corporation. Okay. Right. They were established back in 1956 by Fair and Isaac, and they created this algorithm. So basically, for, for what, what is credit? Credit's just a determining factor for creditors to see the type of risk that they're going to run with mm-hmm. a consumer. Mm-hmm. And again, depending on where your scores range, which they could range from a 350 all the way to an 850, mm-hmm. the higher the score, the less of a risk. The lower the score, the higher the, higher the risk. The risk. The higher the rates. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, this FICO scoring platform is created at five different um, key points. The biggest one is called payment history, and it takes 35% of your overall credit score. So right. the number one way to actually build credit when you have access to it, and again, remember this always, that's what I always told my, my students, not having any credit is good credit. And why? Because there's no blemish. Right. So right. We don't know whether you're a risk up. or not. <clears throat> Correct. Versus knowing for sure you're a risk. Exactly. That's true. That makes a lot of sense. So for, for me, the number one thing is once you have eligibility to apply for a credit card, make payments on time. Because yep. that's really what credit is, is the ability to make payments over a period of time. So and on time. Let's yeah. talk about a real life example. I was telling you earlier, I, I was experiencing something yesterday. I promise you, it's so funny. <laughs> we're doing the show today, and I went through this yesterday. So, long story short, found out that someone called my Coles card company and changed the address, the phone number, the email address, and purchased some things under my Coles card since um, April. This was happening, and I never received a bill because they changed the address. So so then there were two late payments that um, occurred late fees, and uh, they reported this to the credit bureau under my social. <laughs> that so hurts. after this show, that we're hurts. going to, have to spend some time together yep, <laughs> so you can help me yeah, fix this. For sure. So I, we I, got you, girl. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you were telling me I should file a police report. I wasn't planning on doing that because when I spoke with the co- um, folks at Coles, they told me that they would open an investigation, yeah. send me some things to sign. I figured, okay. But I told them the most important aspect of it for me is to make sure that the credit bureau know that this wasn't me. They need to fix whatever damage that they've made. So tell me about that. How, how bad is uh, this? Um, you know, at, at the end for me, anything that's negative in your credit, and, and I thank God that, you know, there is rules and regulations. There's actually this act that was passed back in 1971, which is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And this act was passed in order to protect us consumers. So that act states that everything in your credit has to be verifiable, accurate, and complete. 
And if it's not, it has to be deleted or it has to be corrected. When I mentioned about the police report, um, well, before we go go ahead and touch on that, one thing component that I'm going to highly encourage the listeners that are actually listening to the audio now, um, have a credit monitoring system. Have something, um, you know, as simple. I have personally Credit Karma. I don't highly encourage everyone to just, you know, use right. that because you're going to be limited. You're not going to have access to experience. So you need a comprehensive credit reporting platform such as like Credit Check Total, Privacy Guard, MyFICO.com. Yep. There's several okay. out there that are really good as well. And so, inexpensive. Um, they range anywhere from 9 to $45 a month. Okay, yeah. I can do the 9 <laughs> The nine. You know, <laughs> what you're referring to the nine is privacy guard, and the only difference between that and it goes all the way, it goes up all the way to forty nine ninety five, which is myfico.com. Right. Is that myfico? And and keep in mind, guys, when we're talking about the FICO scoring platform, not every credit monitoring offers that. Right. Uh, that that, that not platform. everybody gives you FICO scores. Yes. Okay. Mm. Whereas remember, okay. the scoring model is basically the the, the formula that is used to calculate mm-hmm. our scores. Okay, different companies use different formulas. Credit Karma gives me both, so I'm missing one credit. Um, you're running on a Vantage 3.0 platform. It's right. not a FICO. It's so not a FICO you're score. You're not speaking English. It's <laughs> <laughs> Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, which are some of the most popular free uh, platforms out yeah. there. They use what is called the Vantage 3.0 scoring module, which is the formula that they use is different from a FICO yeah. formula. Oh. So instead of having Whenever five tiers, it has six. Right. So that I six see. influences the score. So if you're looking to try to get something as close as you can to what the banks, first off, no consumer has access to these scores, by the way. Oh. So you don't have access to what car dealerships use, yep. what banks use, what mortgage companies use. That's that's something that they have accessible to them. But, but for hot, different niches. See, so that's good to know because I figured what I sees what they see no no it's absolutely not. never so they could see a higher or lower score and the difference oh, is because of the amount of information that's accessible to them right you see if you go into like a privacy guard which is a credit monitoring provider it's limited up to two years right and now if you go into a mortgage company they might have access up to seven years of information which mm-hmm. influences Correct. the score mm-hmm. because within the FICO the five tiers is payment history 35 mm-hmm. 30% is based on the debt ratio which is limits versus balances on your credit cards we also have history which is 15% we have 10% which is based on mixture of credit and we also have inquiries, which, which is, is an additional 10%, 10% yeah. which complete the whole 100. Okay. Yeah. So depending on, let's say, 15%, which is history, and if you only have access to two years, when a bank accesses your credit score, mm-hmm. then they have seven or let's say 10 years, right? guess what? You're going to have more history, so your your scores is going to range. It's, it's going gonna to be different. It's going to be different. You know, since we're on that topic, something just came to my mind. So <laughs> years ago, and I believe I called you and told you this, mm-hmm. and you said, no, you shouldn't have done that. I had so many cards, and I just started closing them because right. I couldn't keep track. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that messed me up because yeah. my credit went down. You're re- because, because remember what Husso said, the second biggest part of that form formula is the availability funds at that ratio. So being that you're taking away, Mm -hmm. okay, from the available funds that you have on credit cards, then obviously your credit score is going to take a hit. And the history thing might have made a difference too because some of those cards were old. Absolutely. So then you can't see them at all. What happens if I reopen them? It's going to start from scratch. Oh, it's start man. Well, but nobody told me this. <laughs> nobody told me this. Two Had things. I known, I wouldn't have closed them. Uh, you know what I tell people, and, and this is obviously <laughs> something really important. The, since 15% of your credit is based on history and 30% is based on limits versus balances. So what I tell people is I want to have the highest limits possible because that's going to put you in a different pool. It's going to put you in a different position compared to other individuals. Right. So Ooh. when you cut a credit card off that you've had for five, six years, and by the way, a good history of amount of time is 9, nine to, 11. to 11 years. Oh. So if that credit card was 5, 7 years and you closed it, you oh, just wow. lost. I didn't know that. Of yeah. that card. I, yeah. I know. This. Yeah. Can I argue this? <laughs> 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 to, to, but you mentioned something else that I think is important too. 
So the limit versus balance. Yeah. So right. it's good when when your credit card company sends you something and say they can increase your limit. So go ahead and do that. Well, um, I'm going to tell I, you I it, did depends. Do that recently. it depends. I hope it's a good thing. Oh. No, no, it's a great thing. <laughs> it's great, yeah. I say ahead. it depends because there's certain creditors. Um, and again, uh, you know, in 2007, with me and Berto, we, you know, we were working for the mortgage company mm-hmm. and the economy fell. Um, I lost a lot. He lost yeah. a lot. And then for us to have to rebuild back, we had to start off with cards that came with high interest rates, came with annual fees, came with monthly service mm-hmm. fees, Fully secure with, cards. And you know what? Mm-hmm. Now we have cards that, like, and that's a, you know, go into too much of that. I, I have a Platinum American Express or I have this and I have all these wonderful cards that now come with a lot of benefits or rewards. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I have not canceled the first beginner cards that I had to take. And one mm-hmm. of them, like Care Credit, um, I'm sorry, um, Credit um, Credit One Bank. Credit One Bank. Credit One Bank offers me an increase of my line with a charge. And oh. you know what? I, I don't like. So you know no. what? I don't accept that. But now with my Capital One, I just told Berto. Yeah. Well, first off, my Discover just went up two grand. And my and my um, um my Best Buy credit card. Best Buy went up uh, another four, like four. But they would four. have to tell you this in advance, right? The fee. For example, who was this? Amazon. Yes, Amazon just first. gave me that option to double. So there, there was no fee though, because no. Amazon. I don't. I don't. I right. don't think Amazon charges. Normally, you're gonna get fees mostly on secure credit cards, secure yes, products, secure products. Okay. okay. Every beginner card. Right. Yeah. So okay. So everybody yeah. can understand a secure card is basically when you're putting, let's say, two hundred dollars down as a collateral. You, as a collateral and you're getting your same $200 back in credit. Yep. That's a fully secured oh, that's credit a fully secured. Is that so for folks with really, really credit. bad yes. credit? Yes. Uh-huh. yes. <laughs> yes. That's you where it be a high risk. Yes. <laughs> Those were, for the high riskers, that's how we get them yes. started. You understand? Yeah. Because that doesn't make sense. I was thinking, why would yeah. I do that? But then if I'm trying to build the credit, that yeah. makes sense. Right. Uh, okay. Rule of thumb, too, and since we're talking about limits versus uh, balances, um, try to maintain your your accounts below 30% utilization. I tell people that's like the magic number. Mm. That's, yeah. Below so, 30%. Below yes. 30%. Okay, I received something recently my goodness it might have been chase where um no it was credit karma sent me something saying mm-hmm. yes i'm going above that 30 percent. so see they're free and they give me little heads up I like <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> don't get me wrong i use look i have credit karma credit sesame privacy guard credit check <laughs> oh my oh, goodness yeah. i use all of them <laughs> I have all the free ones yeah. and the the one that you pay more than forty five a month. Yeah, I do. But <laughs> but we is that the thing it, is since we do this for a living, <laughs> right. I always like to compare what like and and I you always want to be it. that. I want right. to be an educator. Yeah. If I have not done it for myself, I don't expect for me to do it for somebody else. I agree. Right. I told somebody and that just today. The, only way the that best work. way to yeah. learn is is to experience it yourself. Yeah. All right, stay tuned. We'll be right back with committed to Miramar. Let's do it. Unilatina International College with campus in Miramar, Florida, is a boutique college with focus on entrepreneurship. UIC offers associate and bachelor degree programs in business, tourism, and communications and media. Associate degree students develop their business plan while studying at UIC. Dream, learn, and grow. Join now our business incubator. Learn more at unilatina.edu or call... 954-607-4344. 954-607-4344. Committed to Miramar, committed to our community, it's right here in Miramar. Welcome back to Committed to Miramar. I'm Commissioner Darlene Riggs, and we are going to continue where we left off. However, before we do that, I want our special guests to let you know how to get a hold of them. Several contact numbers, address, <laughs> tweet, <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, yeah. send a bird. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, basically, start off with um, the office. yeah, but, well, you guys can go ahead and uh, contact our office. Our number is 855. 855- Five three two eight four five three option one. Okay. Also, um, our address, our physical address for those in the near area is fifty nine eleven Northwest one hundred and seventy third Drive, Suite eighteen, Miami, Florida three three zero one five. So we offer a free credit evaluation. Uh, before anything, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the person is going to be a good fit for the service. So anybody that's listening, um, if you have not had a sit down with a with a credit analyst, um, go ahead and contact us because what we're going to 
to go ahead and do is we're going to go through a really in-depth um, conversation starting from the top of your credit report we're going to show you we're going to talk to you about the credit formula we're going to talk to you about the potential of increase we're going to talk to you about the type of information that can be deleted what information you could go ahead and add on so we're going to share so much value with you that mm-hmm. even if you in a sense are not deciding to move forward but at least you took um, that information on average a client of ours that yeah. does not enroll in our services just with the information that we share with them could potentially increase their own scores by 45 to 55 points. Yeah. That's just awesome. because there's just so much fat, I, I call it, in the credit <laughs> report mm-hmm. that could be turned into muscle, that could be turned into use. And um, and I think that's where the education comes in. Absolutely. So, I love that about you because you're all about the community and making the community yeah. healthy. I remember years ago when I called you, you gave me some advice and, and, and I followed that and that alone helped me increase my score. And some things we can do ourselves, but being the expert you can help us maintain it long term because it's not something that you want to do now and forget about it correct like you said we need to monitor it i agree with that Mm -hmm. i'm I'm bad so after the show (laughs) i'm gonna start keeping tabs on you (laughs) you you need to because you know we put it at the back burner again unless we're trying to buy something where we need the credit we forget about it so it's something that we have to think about all the time and at least invest in something monthly letting us know mm-hmm. okay because now I have a mess I need to deal with yeah. with this whole um, calls and I need to yeah. pull my other right. uh, other all reports. everything right. to find out okay do yeah. I own a house somewhere that <laughs> yeah. I didn't sign off on yep. I'll I go claim it for <laughs> sure I'll, I'll go claim it so hopefully there's some equity way. in it yeah. <laughs> I always tell people this, um, these two things. Um, the first one is, and for the monitoring of your credit, you can't improve on something you don't measure. Yeah. So you need a measuring tool. And the second thing is always best to want it and not need it. Not need it. Then, then to yeah. really to, to want it, it and you can't then have to it. to need it and not to have it. You know what I'm saying? It's so true. It's a lack of preparation, I would right. say. And then, obviously, if you have certain goals. Going back to... Um, um, yeah, let me go ahead and provide you guys with uh, our social media. Aside, yes. you know, Please okay? so check us out. Obviously, you could go to our website, which is www.buildworthstrategies.com. Uh, you can request information on there. There's uh, a lot of information. Yeah. We even have blogs in there. Uh, a lot of blogs. We also have uh, two YouTube channels. Yeah. First one being Jay Lobos, okay, where is uh, my good friend here, uh, Mr. Villa Lobos, <laughs> giving you guys the inside. And yeah. then we have Keeping It Real with Credit, which is basically uh, another YouTube channel where we give, we bring awareness to the community. We're also on Facebook at Build Word Strategies. And on Instagram, you guys can go to uh, Jay Lobos' channel or A underscore game for life. Or you could also check us out on you uh, versus credit on the Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, so all of these channels, all of them are different. Um, the website has certain blogs and informational um, tips in there as well. Yeah. The YouTube, the keeping it real um, with credit on YouTube, mm-hmm. um, it it has a lot of just education, education, right. education, and and we provide, we literally volunteer free information. Yeah. Like and also my channel, which is the J Lobos, is a. Tra- Transparency and the way I operate on a day-to-day basis as a business owner and what I do with my other employees Mm -hmm. and also how I address certain concerns through clients. So clients are able to see exactly what we're about. Excellent. So there are so many ways to get a hold of you. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you so much for sharing because right as yeah. we listen, we want our audience to be able to get a hold of you to get this done. Like we said at the beginning, everybody needs this. Yeah. Right. You know, um, unless you know you're about to go. <laughs> listen, the way that I, I tell, even then you got to prepare. The way that I like to tell so you my don't guys. Me like- Everybody, this is for everybody yeah. and anybody, anybody. Regardless Absolutely. of what you do, who yeah. you are, how much you make, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. And we saw even at age 14, yeah. You, yeah. you should start thinking about mm-hmm. this. And as parents, we should make sure that our children, you know, help them build that little bit of credit um, now. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and help my 14-year-old Absolutely. do that. It's so funny. My nine-year-old will be like, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> we could also work with him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it really is. That it's never too early. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I love that. I have a question. Yeah. If a person go ahead and pay off some of the debt, such as a car or a home, mm-hmm. does that help to establish the credit? More? Well, I'm going to tell you 
It depends. Yeah. And, and, and not only that it depends because what happens is we're talking about different types of accounts, right? So remember that 10% is based on mixture of credit. Three types of accounts are considered in that mixture. First off is mortgages. Mm -hmm. We have installment accounts, which are term loans, car loans, student loans, and we also have credit cards, either secured or unsecured. Right. So if I go ahead and I decide, if I have an option, people have asked me, Justo, I have, I came across this much amount of money, I wanna pay off my car, what do you what do you suggest? And then I look at their credit report and they're like at 70% utilization. My number one question is, what is the interest rate of that vehicle? Mm -hmm. um, and second off, what is the purpose of this? So in a sense, the type of business that we kind of run is goal oriented. Right. So what is the objective here? What is, is your it because goal? you want to reduce the amount of payments because of the interest rate? Or is it because maybe you want to boost your credit scores? If you're talking about boosting credit scores, I would literally focus on paying off those credit cards because by doing that, I reduce the utilization and in turn, it's 30% of my credit compared to if I pay off a car loan, that car loan falls into the category of a 10%. Right. So what, which one am I having? Having more of an impact, the car loan. Or the credit card? Well, I did not know that. Oh my goodness! And you know, we should call our friends and ask sometimes. I just did that. Hey. My husband retired, and we we were leasing our cars, and we paid them off, I and we just paid stuff off. We didn't right. even know there was a proper a thing, way though. to do that. It, that's good. If you have if you have right. the means, pay it off. You're good. You're not. You can't go wrong with paying but off. I want to increase my my no. credit score. Because exactly. <laughs> depending yeah. on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to actually get your scores to the 700s because you want to buy a house, then it's in your best interest. Oh, no, to I wanted 850. Okay. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I mean, if that's the oh, point, is. then you could just bring down the utilization on all your cards instead of paying that, that paying down that vehicle yep. because that's going to create a higher impact on your credit scores than paying the vehicle. Wow, well, see, I did not know that. We yeah. just went and we just, wow. See, it, uh, there's a smarter way to do it. And yeah. you're my friend. What kind of friend are you? <laughs> hey. You didn't even tell me. <laughs> well, I see credit is You've been busy. You're, you know you're, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always say um, we, we always have to. This is why you know, sitting down, analyzing it. Yeah. Um, we have to. We have to compare apples to apples. I always like to ask clients. You know, mm -hmm. what, what their goals, what the objectives are. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you want to go ahead and do that? Why do you want to uh, obtain that? Because if we don't set that real expectation from the beginning, then we're we're, we're right. pretty much pr putting ourselves in a position of failure. Correct. So that's does that's the, the number one thing. Does the department store card matter? They're it, just as equivalent as a regular retail right. bank, as a regular commercial bank. Um, it falls under the same algorithm. Right. So store mm -hmm. credit cards falls into the revolving side of it. Mm -hmm. So it's seen as a regular credit card. Okay. And yeah. that's probably what's killing us. Yeah. <laughs> we well, have every department store yeah. card. Right. Now, keep in mind, this is the thing. Bank cards supposed to department uh, store cards. Department store cards have really high interest rates. Bank mm -hmm. cards have better interest rates so that's true and you don't get the five percent back well, that also gas as a matter of fact, groceries. and i'm sorry to interrupt because these questions are really good questions yes and i think some of them have already been addressed as part of our channels right so if you guys listeners that are out there right these questions are great but there's other 30, over. 40 over questions, 30, 40 um, questions that have probably ha are not going to get asked today Right, that Consequent people might be that, yeah. you know, intrigued about. Check out the channels because they're full of information. As a right. matter of fact, we did one, we, credit cards uh, versus banks, banks versus, versus retail, retail credit, credit cards. cards. We have it on we our We did blog. a video on that. Yeah. That's and the differences, I saw a few of them. Rates and everything, yeah. yeah you guys have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. My goodness. I'm learning so much. And I, I, I feel like had somebody told me, I would have never experienced some of the bad stuff that I've experienced. And even, you know, something as minute as closing a card, I never even thought that it would impact. Yeah. If anything, I thought it would be a good thing. Right. And I closed some that I've had since I was, you know, in my early 20s that wow. probably I should you, yeah, have because I just had too many. You lost a bunch of history on that. She lost two Which years. It, it goes into that 15% <laughs> that Husto talked about. Yes, already. I love him. He says I lost two years. You're so right. <laughs> 
to tell you something. Um, so uh, over there for the listeners, obviously out there, and they're still contemplating that. Some people might say, "Well, you know what? I don't. I didn't really like this card, or this card really charges me. This annual fee is too right. high, or whatever." So th- one thing, preparation, right? So what you're going to do if that's going to be the case, you've made up your mind. You don't want that card. There's a there's a monthly fee or whatever it is. Work on another card to supplement the limit on that one. So before right. you cancel that one and you dre- decrease on scores, leverage that card. Apply for a higher limit if you have not done so. Mm-hmm. If you get up to that limit of that card, 500, 1,000, whatever, whatever that is, and then you let that card go, the impact that you're going to have is not going to be as high as it would have without having any line increases. Right. Excellent. And see, I I wish, and it sounds like something we need to be educated on ongoing. It's not yeah. something right within the hour we're going to, right, be able to answer right. every question. I love the podcast that you have yeah. to educate on every little topic. Yeah. Probably every time you get a question that doesn't yeah. have a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We'll we'll be for everything. Yeah. Medical bill, bill, since you're in the medical field. Uh-huh. Yep. So, you know, there's, that's a big one. Wait, those, they don't, they don't means. report on your credit, those, right? Like, let's say you go to the hospital, you have your, um, your core payment and you say, okay, bill me. They cannot report those right unless it's go it goes into a collection yeah Ew. yeah unless you not unless you don't address I, that bill right the hospital has it um there's called the hipaa which the hipaa basically protects our personal information so what happens is that 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 the hospital cannot collect directly so they have to sell the debt to a third party, mm. which is the collection agency. So right. then they in turn can and send then you to they can to collect. Like yeah. Huso said, remember since medical the medical field is regulated by HIPAA. The information that that medical office or hospital can share with the collection company is going to be very limited, because mm-hmm. remember HIPAA protects our personal right. information as patients, our medical right. records, and our things medical like that. records. So, so we share. already know for a fact that whatever information that medical office shared with mm-hmm. the collection company was it's very be limited. limited. You know, and I know they're also regulated because years ago I received you know a letter from our local hospital saying you know certain charts were breached, and they gave me three years of credit monitoring because. Yeah. Of right. Of that breach and it's like similar to what happened to Equifax not too long ago. 143 yeah. million people mm-hmm. were breached through were Equifax. Breached. Oh, yeah. So they I offered. did see that on yeah. the media. Yep, mm. we did a video on that. And you know, with way back then with this hospital. When I received the three years of credit monitoring, mm-hmm. I honestly didn't. I was like, oh, thank you. But I never really took advantage of it. Yeah. So I, I would advise people take advantage of it and take control. Not only that, I mean, remember, if this was, again, that was with the hospital, you know, so not to say that because of that, you're going through what you went through yesterday. But again, that certain things like these knows, happen. Yeah. Like that was years ago and you never know who got your information but it turned out someone did because it it turned out that someone got a hold of my credit cards and pay their their um electricity they paid their bills when we come back so there's a couple of things that are floating through my mind in a few minutes so one thing that happened to me that um well i want to cover and educate the community on how to be careful and not sharing your information. What happened with the hospital was a complete, that's out of my control. Right. But I'm one of those, I'm speaking to myself, I need to not be so quick to give folks my social. Yeah. So when is it that we can go ahead and do Who can we trust? Who can we not trust? There's so many um, different pieces of that puzzle avenues mm-hmm. where even yesterday when I was talking to those folks you know she asked me for my social I said well now I'm hesitant to give it to you because <laughs> you know I don't even it. know who you are right so I said I'll give you the last four digits so is that okay you know with the last four digits versus my entire social and they should be able to do what they need to do with just the last four digits depends on what you're doing but um, you need to do your due diligence I always highly encourage people do your homework first before anything um, go online double check triple check find out who they are I there's so many ways on how to even find that information like that I'm not I'm not sharing my social anymore because so many yeah. things have happened to me and I think back we're talking you know 10 years ago when I've been dealing with this madness so when we come back we'll continue this conversation stay tuned with Committed to Miramar we'll be right back Uni Latina International College offers an English as a second language program for international students. UIC's high qualified ESL teachers help students develop and master the English speaking and comprehension skills needed for both work and pleasure. Our ESL program also focuses on cultural adaptation through fun field trips and cultural experiences. Start your journey today at unilatina.edu slash ESL or call 954 60 
407-407-4344. Committed to Miramar, live, work, and play. It's right here in Miramar. Committed to Miramar, live, work, and play. It's right here in Miramar. Uni Latina International College with a campus in Miramar, Florida, is a boutique college with an applied, cutting-edge, holistic education model. Business, tourism, and communication students not only develop their field intellectual skills, but also are empowered to become holistic professionals through yoga, self-empowerment, Tai Chi courses, and more. Sign up to become a holistic professional at unilatina.edu or call 954-607-4344. Welcome back to Committed to Miramar, and we are here with President and CEO of Build Worth Strategies, Justo Villalobo. Ah, oh, not too bad. You got and it really Alberto good. Alberto Gomez. <laughs> that was Villalobos. good. <laughs> Beautiful. And my goodness, gentlemen, we have learned so much. So we will continue with our conversation because we still have a couple more important topics to cover, and okay. I have so many questions. So after the show... <laughs> I, I have one. I want to know if you could obtain a credit card without giving the Social Security. Mm. Uh, if you walk That's into a, a store, um, for the most part, they're going to require that. Right. Now, my suggestion would be if you don't feel comfortable giving it to somebody in front of you then just go through their online so right. if you want to apply at, at the macy's instead of giving it to a physical person just go to macy's.com yeah and apply for the credit card directly this way you're mm-hmm. not sharing it directly with somebody who you don't know it's going straight from the site that's the best way to do right, it right but, but eventually but, they will need it yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you back. will need uh, a social because that's the only way that they'll be able to link it to you personally yeah okay and know whether you're credible right <laughs> and not, uh, yeah. obviously, you know make sure that you know that you're worthy <laughs> whether you get that 500 hour limit or that 10 <laughs> <laughs> or even to add on to that, though, because there's sometimes too, um, you know, we humans make mistakes, right? So if you apply for a credit card, even if you're doing it through online and you make a mistake on a number, the creditor might require a copy of your social and a copy of your address verification, a copy of yep. your ID, additional mm-hmm. to the application before giving before you giving extending the credit. Awesome. So that's you have that's some great questions, Sherry. Well, I, keep I'm them coming. Just, she's just not sharing her madness. No. Not sharing my. I've been a victim. Talk to me, <laughs> Again, keep in mind, guys, that we have pretty much an answer for every question out there. Go to our YouTube. We're keeping it real to the J Lobos. We have a tons of material, videos, and even if we can't. Or we don't have a video for it. We love the challenge oh, of research. Always. And by the way, uh, we also have an in-house attorney that we work with. He's a consumer attorney. That guy is notorious for closing non-collection agencies. The guy's a Great. killer. Just to let you know that. This so, guy is our new we, best he's, friend. He's, <laughs> They helped Ray. Yes. Ray is uh, basically the person. Our marketing see, guy. Our, our marketing guy, the one yep. you see in the videos. Ray had a bit of a situation where this gentleman, uh, our, our attorney, pretty much had to close down that collection company. And that's how we came we came about. Yeah. That's, wow. how, that's how everything developed. You know, the whole uh, channel, the YouTube channel. Ray wanted to share his story. That's how everything started. Yeah. He brought us into the mix because he worked with us previously. So... What happened was with Ray, um, he ended up um, he ended up paying a collection to a collection agency that was not legit. Right. So oh, it was wow. some people working in the back of a house, just uh, at a patio some, here in yeah. Beach. So when he got the attorney involved, um, the 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 headquarter of that company was somewhere like in North Carolina, North somewhere over there, Virginia, and the attorney followed the trail. They were able to finally find that company. They ended up suing that company. And the company ended up closing down because of things that they were not allowed to do. Some people are kind of intimidated. So if you're out there and you're intimidated by these collection agencies, these letters that you're getting from attorney's office, sometimes we're like, oh, man, I got a summon from the courthouse. What do I do? And sometimes we, we're, we're so compelled to pay these debts no. that we feel, mm-hmm. since it comes from an attorney's letterhead, that this is legit. Right. Do your research first. Do your don't, don't be so quick to pay these. This is where we come in. 
mm-hmm. and we help clients by investigating using rules and regulations mm-hmm. and making sure that they do have the right to do what they're doing if they don't then us consumers we have rights right and there's the fair debt collectors practice act there's certain things that they're not supposed to be telling you they're not supposed to be talking to your spouse mm-hmm. they're not supposed to mm-hmm. if they Threaten open you. communication with you you're that. supposed to be getting notices in writing right away wow. and five days from that communication they're not supposed to be they're not uh, supposed to be threatening passing themselves as attorneys they're not right, supposed people, to be garnishing folks get intimidated yes. and what? they figure okay right this is coming from this is the thing a lot what a lot of us consumers don't know is that most of these collection companies are law offices do you understand? Mm-hmm. It's wow. easier for them because they already have it all. It's law offices. So they... To cause that intimidation. Right. So the more educated we are, the better off. And then just don't be afraid, you know, to... Again, it's our to right it. to mm-hmm. challenge and dispute yeah. any and all information coming across in your report. The awesome. sad thing is we have the elderly and they're very yeah. fearful and, and they prey upon yes. them. Folks take yes. advantage. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's I, I went through something recently. I told you, I'm, I'm such a victim. Okay, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's 100. I, yeah. I, uh, I didn't put my information too much. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I have Prime. What can I say? (laughs) But I I dealt with a phone company recently who tried to intimidate me into, you know, um, they sent me to the credit bureau and I said, you were wrong for doing, you know, making this. So I went to my, one of the, both of them, the credit report folks, the two that I have Mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. Credit Credit (laughs) (laughs) And I explained what happened and apparently they took it off and fixed it. But I also also call the um, the phone company and I said, "Listen, you cannot do this." And this is what happened. This is what happened. I said, "Fix it and fix it now." I end up skipping a lot of channels, but they couldn't intimidate me. But you're right; you have some elderlies or some folks who who just don't know that this is not in their realm, and they feel okay. Well, if you say this, that, and that, no, it's not. Investigate it, challenge it, question it. Right. I mean, like you know, here in, in the city of Miramar, you know, I, I I'm I'm a neighbor, by the way. I live in Pebble Pine, so I'm right next door. Okay, I, sister I, used, city? I used to be. Uh, uh, Miramar, Miramarian. Miramarian? Okay, yeah, Miramarian. and you're opening your next location in Miramar? Right. Uh-huh. Okay, so Because it's right here in Miramar. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're here already. But look, there, a, a lot of things is uh, also, you know, what, when it comes to a lot of us like Spanish community, mm-hmm. that, uh, English is not the first language. They get somebody calling them, threatening them. Oh, you're going to go to court. They, they, people just get, they, bro, they freeze in the trash. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of that going around. That's one of the reasons why. We want to create that awareness, like Justo says. There's not enough of us. Yeah. Do you understand? There's never going to be enough of us. Because remember, we're fighting against these Fortune 500 companies, these Mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar companies. It's a business within itself. And just to add on to that, to also to the listeners, remember too that there's 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 also statute limitations on information, Mm -hmm. which is the information being reported on your credit. So after a certain amount of time, Mm -hmm. uh, depending on on the on the length of time that information, you have the right to to get it deleted. Yep. And also bankruptcy. A bankruptcy. It's one, right? Seven years? Ten. 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 Oh, It can oh, wow. stay on there up to ten years. <laughs> Ooh, that's ugly. Bankruptcies <laughs> and judgments. Wow. But, yeah. I thought it was seven because I had a friend who recently went through it. I could have sworn um, she was dealing with a seven year. That's also like, just to mm. point that out, that's a really big misperception mm. also. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, the statutes of limitations is the amount of time that any creditor can come after us for payment. Right? Mm. Now, in the state of Florida, based on our research, is. Four years. Four to five years. Four to five years. What that it they is, can come after you. promissory right. notes. Okay. It's not seven years. So a lot of us, oh. we don't know that. I did So because not knowing that, we're like, okay, it's, still, it's at six. So yeah, I, I have to wait another year or two years. Mm. You know? So, and, and again, just to throw some more in there and, and more clarity. So there's two statute limitations. One's on information, which mm-hmm. is information reported on your credit report. So anything with the exception of a bankruptcy is seven. Uh, a bankruptcy is 10. And then when we're talking about debt, debt, depending if it's either uh, oral or written, it could be from four to five, including promissory notes, which are mortgages. So anything after that statute limitation, you have a, you have a certain right. So mm-hmm. if you have a collector that's calling you and you know that the first date of delinquency, which is the first time you stop making payments to that account, was past five years and you're in the state of Florida... Legally, they cannot sue you and they can't take you to court. So what does that mean for us? If somebody's trying to sue you, somebody's trying to throw a garnishment, somebody's trying to throw a lawsuit, um, that's basically illegal. And for the most part, people don't know this and 
they're still paying these debts even after it's already expired. Right. Mm. They don't know. Yeah. We've learned so much, yes, Sherry. Absolutely. I have a very important question before we run out of time. <laughs> we, we have a question. She has a really good question. <laughs> I like it. The, the time frame. We're always, you know, I think there's another misconception where we think this takes forever to fix. Well, it, 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 it depends. depends. Everybody's situation is obviously different. Uh, also will depend, you know, who are you working with? Um, you know, at the end of the day, I like we like to think that we have a real solution for a real problem. And, you know, but basically yeah. the whole purpose of our program is to get the consumer in and out as soon as possible. To add to that, um, you know, uh, the, and it goes back to the same thing is the goal. So if you're coming to me, you have a 550 credit score. And the first question that I'm going to ask is, what's your goal? If your goal is to reach a 640 because you're interested in an FHA product mm. to buy a home, well, then my goal is to get you 90 points. Right. How I am I going to get there? Well, we're going to get there by establishing a new line. I'm going to tell you where to go. Mm-hmm. Right. We're going to get there by reducing this balance on this existing account that you have. We're going to go ahead and take on these three, four negative items. And the probability of success is this because of the length of time that it's been there. And all these combinations of things, I could literally tell somebody, this is going to take you 60 to 90. It could take you four to five months. It could take you it eight depends. to 10. Right. And the, setting the right expectation is where I feel personally that separates us from our competitors. Right. right. The transparency. Because yep. again, as yep. bad as I want somebody to get into the program, if I don't help it, you to reach that goal, mm-hmm. we're not going to get any other right. referrals. And misconception we're not get is not good either because if I At think, all. okay, you're no. going to be able to help me in 60 days and it's really going to take four or five months. Right. right. That's a horrible that's experience. That's the reason, that's the main reason why we have in place a free credit evaluation. Because again, mm-hmm. if it's somebody who is not going to see the benefit in our mm-hmm. program, we're not I don't want to take you as a you're client. Honest yep. about, I love that. See, you, you, I love you guys because you're a little bit like nurse. Thing. We assess first before we do anything. No, it's true. You, you have to do an assessment because you can't just jump in and yeah. tell folks, you know, that you need to see what you're working with. Right, and right. I love that. So, gentlemen, my goodness, thank you so much for thank coming you. to Committed to Miramar thank again. Thank you for having us. Oh, we had so much fun. We are here with Build Worth Strategies. Yep. Justo and Alberto. Yes, thank Please you so much contact for them. Us. Reach out. They have so many ways. Just yeah. Google it and something will yeah. come up. Google literally um, <laughs> Justo Villalobos or Build Word Strategies. Um, you can literally go on or YouTube and put the uh, word credit, credit and repair. we're the first ones to come out. And we're going to be the first ones. And to you know out. where we can see you again on August 14th at our Miramar complex on Correct. at 7 p.m. because yep. we have More our property appraiser Absolutely. coming to tell us on how to save on our property taxes which you all fit right into that puzzle. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so we're not you're not only going to get how to save money in your property taxes but also how to make it happen with the Exactly. Credit. That's <laughs> on August 14th, 7 p.m. at a multi-service complex which is 6700 Miramar Parkway. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to seeing you there Miramarians and gentlemen, thank you again. Thank you so much for, for having Coming. Thank you for having us. Don't run because we have to fix my problem in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, girl. Committed to Miramar. Live, work, and play. It's right here in Miramar.